It's a golden year, and uh, not just one, but two. Well, we've got the one year, but two people choosing it. From the searchers, we have Frank Allen and John McNally. Hello, welcome. Uh, good to be good here to with you. It's lovely to see you both looking spry and fit. Mm. And, oh, my and wish. old. <laughs> well, no, no, youthful. <laughs> God. Amazingly youthful. Oh, Youthful's not the word. <laughs> well, look, uh, the amazing thing is the, the band has been going for, is it 67 years? Is that well, right? Well, roughly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels yes, like 100 years. <laughs> from the time of the first inception of the name, that's from 57 when the name was adopted by the band because of the, the John Wayne film, yeah. you know, that's which, where it came which from. was released yeah. in that year. Yeah. And so it turned from a skiffle group called The Searchers into other little units and then... Till the professional days in '63, yeah. and John, you were there right at the very beginning. Yes, right from the beginning. Yes, from the John Wayne days. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you, were, you had a band before that, even didn't you? Yes, we did. We had Skiffle Band, and we had a, a gang that used to stand on a street corner, and most of the lads had guitars. And we used to play all the Skiffle under a uh, overhanging shop when, when yeah. doorway, and we, when it rained, we used to sit stand there and play guitar, singing "Takes a Bodied Man" and. Yeah, freight train, all that kind of rubbish. Okay. So. <laughs> but they, they were quite good, so I mean, yeah, it was good. It was, it was easy to play, and that's what we did. And it's, then one of one of the lads who was con, uh, conscripted in the army came out of the army, and he'd have skiffle group in the army, and he said, well, "Let's start a, a special group." And I said, "What do you mean?" So we'll, we'll, we'll do a proper group and play seriously. I said, "Okay, then." And we became the searchers. Yeah. And, and this was Liverpool, of course. Oh, that was, it was Liverpool when it was thriving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it, do you think? Was it something in the air at the time? Oh, it must we... have been something in the air besides, I mean, because there were so many bands. I mean, unknown to us, there was loads of bands from all the regions in Liverpool. Yeah. I mean, like Jerry from the other side, south of Liverpool, the Beatles from the east side and us from the north. All that was going on, but we didn't know. Amazing amount yeah. of talent. And Frank, you were from further south. Uh, yes, I'm, I've always been from London, West London. I was born in Hayes, and my family are from Greenock in Scotland. Excellent. And, um, yeah, I met the searchers in Hamburg. Um, I, I'm, people still consider me the new boy. I've only been with the <laughs> yes. band 60 years now. <laughs> We'll um, be away so just next week. There, there'll be time when they'll <laughs> accept it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like moving to the country, isn't it? Yes, you don't exactly. Accept, you're not accepted until you've moved on, really. So here we are uh, with all these years behind us, but you're still out there on the road. You, you tried to give it up a year or so ago, but they wouldn't let you, would they? Tried to give it up in uh, 2019. <laughs> I that was the first I one. We, up decided we, we were decided... <laughs> We were going to retire. Retirement is very difficult. You know, we we stopped. We we did our last tour that ended thirty first of March two thousand and nineteen. We were, got all the uh, the legal things sorted out so that we are now sort of not working anymore. Then COVID hit, so nothing happened for four or five years, and then uh, we got all this pressure. It's amazing how many people want you when you've stopped. <laughs> they, they, they can't wait to get you, and they'll pay more money for you then as well. Money? And we got all this pressure money? to start up again, so we agreed to do a thank you tour, um, which was last year, 2023. And we didn't know how it was going to be, but it was a huge success. And what's more important, it was incredible fun. And we, we'd found a joy in it that had just gone before because we'd been around each other too much and it wasn't quite the fun it used to be. But this uh, thank you tour was wonderful. Finished in Liverpool at the uh, Philharmonic and it was such a fantastic night, an epic night. that we thought, oh, this is great. And there were places around the country who were complaining because we hadn't done their area, Particularly including Scotland. Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were in such good moods that we immediately agreed to do another 28 days, which is the tour we're about to start now. Whether that was wise or not, I don't know. <laughs> it will certainly be a success, but, you know, and I think it's going to be great fun. I hope it is. And you're enjoying it as much as ever. John? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> in my age, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the wife's not happy, but I'll still do it. <laughs> but John got through, I don't know how he got through the last tour, because before the tour started, he'd had a gardening accident and completely um, almost destroyed his right hand, yeah. which hadn't really healed up it's, by the time we started bruised, the tour. Still bruised. Yeah, yeah. Do, doing his that, own gardening way. work. Can you imagine that? A rock and roll star <laughs> doing his own gardening. <laughs> it's like well, spinal it's tap, really. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. It's fresh air, isn't it? Get out in the fresh air. But in fact, the whole tour did him a a whole world of good because there was a different person at the end of the tour to the one that started it. That was Tinner. 
Yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's therapy, isn't it? It was great. And we're looking forward to this one so much. Now, tell me about the, the search of sound. What was it, that John, that made the search of sound the way they did? Well, we don't really know. and We never thought about it. We never sort of digest it. We, we just thought, we just, each member played the way he wanted to play. Um, at just that one time we decided to use the 12-string guitar. Yeah. And it spiralled from there. Yes, yeah. So it's very simple, and you don't think about it. We just did it, you know, uh, as part of it. You're being you, aren't you? Yeah, being just yourself, being what yeah. we are. And, yeah. You know, and the top end of my guitar was quite prominent, and Tony Hatch uh, liked the sound of it, and he sweets me sweet, you can hear it right, right away. Yeah, and Tony produced your early records. Oh, Tony Hatch, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He yeah. Did produced all our stuff. Yeah. Basically, you copy, you copy songs, though, intending to more or less reproduce them, but because of who you are and you're not the person who made the original, you come out with a different sound yeah. automatically. Yeah. And great songs. I mean, fantastic oh, oh, great songs. Are, well, the song's yeah, the most important thing. Yeah, they were, you, you, we had lots to pick from, from the American uh, market, all those uh, Motown stuff and... And things like that used to nick nick them all. All, all the pull bands used to play Motown, and that's how it all came about. Yeah, you Jackie DeShannon songs. Like oh, yeah, Jackie DeShannon was great. Yeah, yeah, she was people. great. Yeah. Well, let's have a, a look at 1964, the year you've chosen, which was the big, big year uh, for the Searchers. And John, the first song you've chosen is the Beatles, your uh, Liverpool fraternity. Yeah, well, we. we <laughs> You can't leave the Beatles out, let's be honest. I mean, we work with them so many times, and I, I thought, well, our, our Days and Night is, is, is the prime song for me. Was there rivalry between the Liverpool no, bands at the none time? None at all. There was regarding songs. You know, if, if we'd done a song in the Beatles, where'd you get that song? You know, mm. like some other guy. Where'd you get that one? Oh, Love Potion Number Nine. Yeah. Where'd you get that one from? So it was swapping uh, songs about. And basically, that's how everyone, all the bands in Liverpool, played the bloody same songs. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the Beatles, who... The Beatles started, started writing, um, the, the, yeah, so that was a very important record for me, our day's night. Uh, Frank, we've uh, got Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Risers. Mm. That's where you came from. Absolutely, yeah, I joined Cliff Bennett um, in 1961, about mid-1961, um, Turn professional with that band because it's the only that I'd really I, I was taken to see them in about 1959 as the local West London band and I loved them from, from the start I started hanging about with them I always wanted to be in that band and in the end I pounded Cliff with arguments uh, in fact we were they they um, they were going to do a show a Saturday club, that's right, at the Playhouse Theatre in London. Brian and, Matthew, yeah. Yeah, Brian yep. Matthew. And they didn't want me as a rhythm guitarist. I'd applied for the job and they weren't going to have one. And uh, but they. I wonder Cl why. Ah, <laughs> Cliff, <laughs> Cliff rang me up and said, well, we've been booked to do um, Saturday club, but the guy who's left the band isn't there and we need six people. Do you want to come and, and help us out and pretend to be Brian for this show? So I said, all right. So between my house and the Playhouse, I bombed bombarded with him with all the reasons why I got to be in the band the rest of the band when I, I went up with Cliff in his sunbeam rapier the rest of the band went up in Ooh. the uh, the minibus <laughs> and by the time we got there I knew once I talked him into it that was it so I joined the band yeah and best, what, best um, education of music that you could ever have with that band they were brilliant a great band and uh, great songs Cliff Bennett great singer mm. oh, great absolutely. absolutely oh fantastic he's just had a, there's just an autobiography coming out about Cliff as well that I'm looking forward to reading you've gone for the animals this time in the house of the rising sun john a great dylan song fantastic song and when i heard it, the intro alone grabbed me for a start and uh, eric burden's voice is powerful on that one i thought it was very different and a very different arrangement than the dylan song i thought it was really exceptional yeah the, the animals put their own stamp on it yeah they, with really? a, a price on, on on the keyboards and stuff it's great sound. Yeah. Dancing in the street this time, Frank. What is it about this? Well, song? Uh, this comes from the time after I just joined the band. It was um, I joined August the third, nineteen sixty-four. Uh, Tony Jackson had uh, went on his merry way, left the Searchers because there was a division in the group because Mike, John, and Frank were the nice, clean living young lads and all that, and Tony was out being a rock and roll star, fornicating all <laughs> over the place and doing those. Which he was, we a, good, he was a good lad. I mean, Tony. that's what rock and roll is about. Well, I should have been doing more of that, but unfortunately, I bored for England. But anyway, I, um, when he left, I joined, and uh, we pretty much went straight into the studio um, to make our, the first record, and we went on to. 
a tour that started in New York and finished in Australia. And the first seven days were at the Fox Theatre in Brooklyn. And I remember my first time to America. You imagine what it's like, which was like the home of everything I wanted to be. And we were picked up. There's a big reception at the airport. We drove into limousines into Manhattan, across the bridge and all that. And Dancing in the Streets came on. It it was just been released. And it was the most fantastic sound. I thought, this is what this whole thing is about. And I'll never forget that memory of going to Manhattan for the first time and listening to that incredible record. And we're on to John's last one now. You've uh, gone for the famous PJ Proby. Good old PJ. (laughs) 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 Oh, you've got to like him. I mean... uh, we we got him going again about uh, 10, 12 years ago to come back on tour. And uh, he, he was a pain in the backside when on tour. But he was great. Once he gets going, he's a great bloke, a great singer. And he, he can, if you go down for lunch for them, he'll eat your house, house at home. <laughs> it's like <laughs> unbelievable. We took him for lunch with the agents. And the agent went, bloody hell, he can't help, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> he also said as we were leaving, it was at Joe Allen's we went to yeah. actually, and as we were leaving, he said, the the, the guy who was going to promote the tour with our, other, with our agent said, what have you got me into? <laughs> but <laughs> but he, he, he's, he's a he's, character. He's what me at show business should be about. He and says, the voice is fantastic. He says the wrong thing sometimes. We know yeah, that. Yeah. Well, yes. he's his own worst enemy, <laughs> but, but he's a gem. I love him. And but this but is it, such yeah. a good recording. This. Oh, really, I mean, the energy on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Old music. and the solo is great as well. <laughs> One more from you, Frank, and it's uh, Dion Warwick. You've gone for Never Get to Heaven. Yeah, well, the, one of the first tours we ever did after I joined was uh, we were headlined, of course, because uh, the Searchers were, you know, one of the, probably one of the top three leading bands at the time, and our support acts were the Zombies starting out. The compares were Sid and Eddie, who actually became Little and Large. Yeah. Um, there was the backing band was Alan Elsden and the Voodoo's. And the Isley Brothers closed the first half, and Dion Warwick came on, opened the second half, and we were top of the bill. And her record at the time was, uh, "You'll never get to heaven if you broke my heart." And, oh, but I think is... we were all Dion Warwick fans at yeah. the time. She had so many good records. Oh yeah, absolutely brilliant, and it's so wonderful. The Searchers are still going strong, and you've got this massive tour. It's so a long, long, long tour. Walking. It's not long at all. It's only 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah, last, week, last year was like 40, 48. Was 40, 43 or 48 last right. year. But even that was a walk in the park because we regularly, in the last 20 years of our career, we were always doing 200 shows a year. That Good was regular. Lord. Good Lord. This is a doddle then, this one, isn't well, it? I hope so. Yeah. It's called work <laughs> and fun. Well, Actually, someone said you get paid for the driving, not for the shows. That's a great truth in show business. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, dr- you love the shows, don't you? I'll well, uh, it's, it's great. The live audience, you can't beat them. No, mm. indeed. And the Thank You Tour begins on the 6th of April, running right through until the 13th of June, 2024. The Searchers, the longest-running band in pop history, yeah. and they're still going to keep doing it. <laughs> Frank, John, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you Thank very you much, Thank you for having Ken. us on the show. Yeah, it's cheers. great.